live soon. Straight out the brilliant me, brilliant luz que nunca me olvidó. Please stand by. We'll be streaming live soon. Good morning. The teaching this morning is important to those persons that not only pray for others, but also uh, are deeply involved in the core of the life of the church. And I say this because it's essential that leaders are able to understand how the Holy Spirit works in the life of any church. If you have uh, questions about this, if you are uh, a beginner and uh, have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then you need to be taught, you need to be disciple in this area. It's critical that you not only receive it, but begin to practice it. Now, I'm going to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8, 9, and 10. These are the three verses in which Paul, writing to the Corinthian church, expressed to them the need to understand the move of the Holy Spirit. So let me read it. For two one, or one person, is given by the Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit decides who, uh, uh, how, how the Holy Spirit operates in the life of a certain person. To, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Concerning information about the future, people, places, events, situations. I told you that that, uh, that is a very powerful move of the Spirit of God. So the next thing here, it says, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So you have wisdom and knowledge. Now, next, you really wanted to see discerning of spirits because it reveals what is the definition of discerning of spirits? The definition of discerning of spirits is, if what is, is, is to discern spiritually by the power of the Holy Spirit, revealing to you that which is bad or good, evil or spiritual. Diseases of Illness that is demonic or illness that is imparted by a person. For instance, you have blood pressure, but you like to eat salty food. Well, that, that, you, need to, you need to have a prayer to change your mentality, change your reason, and bring you to compliance with what your body needs. And so the Holy Spirit sees what's bad or good, evil or good. Now, but it's not there. So let me go to a, another screen, and I want you to look at it. Look at discerning of spirits uh, being moved out of the top. It's supposed to be a word of wisdom there, knowledge and discerning. And so Paul simply takes discerning out of there and moves way down here after the gifts of healing. See, after the gifts of healing, he comes in here before prophecy. Of course, I've been teaching you there are three gifts of revelation, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, faith, work, and mere gifts of healings, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation. And so why then, why then discerning of spirits coming out of the top comes in before prophecy. Now, as you study chapter 14 of 
1 Corinthians. Let's go back to the hotel screen, Gene. Uh, Paul begins to talk about the usage of tongues in the life of the church. He says, he who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So let me go up to the screen one more time. In other words, prophesying here, prophecy here, edifies the church, where tongues is edifies one person. Prophecy edifies the church. Why does discerning of spirits is taken from the top and, and get between healing, gifts of healing and prophecy? Okay, let's go back to the, to the other screen now. In order to understand this, you have to understand that Paul talked about prophecy and interpretation is equal to uh, prophecy and interpretation is essential in the life of the church and public. In other words, tongues and interpretation is essential in the life of the church. I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake there. Tongues and interpretation is essential in the life of the church. If there's tongues within the service, then it has to be translated. But prophecy and discerning is what Paul is trying to communicate with you this morning. Why did Paul take in discerning of spirits and matched with prophecy? Because if he just stayed in here, that'll be three, three, and three. That's nine. Why did he do this? He did this in order to to emphasize prophesying, edifying, building, comfort. 1 Corinthians 14, 3. The idea of speaking into people's lives, the idea of encouraging people, the idea of, of, of saying something wonderful, the idea of saying life is going to be exciting in your life, God is going to bless you abundantly, the power of the Holy Spirit is going to heal your family, and you don't have to worry about anymore what's happening in the world today. God is in control of all the waves of, 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 of liberalism that is coming toward the church. He is the Lord of all. He will encourage you. Your son will be healed. Your son will be delivered. Your daughter will be healed. Your daughter will be delivered. And the power of God will come upon the life of your church. And the power of God will come upon the life of your family. I speak healing toward your family in the name of Jesus. What is all that? That's prophesying. I'm speaking in the future and calling things that be not as though they were. I'm speaking into it. That's prophesying. Now, I know that uh, there are hundreds and millions of churches that don't believe this way because it's, it's a gift and we believe the gifts are not for today. And, of course, you know, that just gets into a, an interesting argument that it's, it's, not, it's not worth it to deal with it. I'm not a cessationist. I am a believer that God is active in power today in the life of the church. And the gifts are operating in those who receive it. Especially in my ministry, everyone that I know that I minister to, and hundreds and hundreds of people, uh, literally thousands of people, they operate in the gifts and they receive and they, and they are blessing our mission trips are powerful. You know, it's five, six mission trips a year that keeps on coming for 50 years. And what I'm saying to you is that uh, churches are moving in that area. Mount Bethel in Atlanta uh, is moving to open the Holy Spirit's presence in the life of the worship. As the music plays, the Holy Spirit's welcome in the life of the church. Now, give me one reason why Paul took this sermon out of the top. Give me one reason why, why Paul took this sermon out of here and attached to prophecy. Okay, let's take a look. Open your Bible into First Acts chapter 16, verse 13. It says, and on the Sabbath, Paul and, and of course, you know, uh, uh, Titus uh, and, of course, uh, I think it's Timothy. That's the that's the first missionary journey. Barnabas. We. That's we. 
we went out to the city by the riverside. So he approached Tartara from the side of where the river was. And if you study Tartara, the river is, is on the west, where prayer was wont to be made. Evidently, there was a synagogue there and a few Jews, and we sat down and spoke to the women which resorted tighter and were working. They were, they were tinting clothing in, 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 in different colors. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple in the city of Tatara, which worshiped God. So it says her name, it says she sold, she sold purple, which is a royal color. The city of Tatara, where it is, you know, we're supposed to be in there this, this March. We have to cancel because of the political situation. But evidently, we're going to go back there. Whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto things which were spoken of Paul. Now, her heart was open. What do you mean by that? That the Holy Spirit preceded the coming of Paul to Tatara. So now, you have to have Paul to discern about this woman when he looked at her to see what the Lord and the Holy Spirit was doing in her life. You have to, you have to, look, she had, whose heart the Lord opened. She was open for the Holy Spirit. So Paul had to discern what was about to happen in her life. And what God was doing in her life. It's verse, uh, verse 14. Acts chapter 16. So what I'm saying. What I'm saying is for the Holy Spirit to be active in the life of Paul. He had to come to the right place in the river. He had to meet this woman. Led of the Spirit of God. And when he saw her. He saw that her heart was open to what Paul was preaching. That's discerning of spirit. I'll show you later a discerning of spirit that, that was bad. But here it is. And when she was baptized, it took a few days later, Paul talked at least three or four days with this woman and her family about Jesus. Paul was establishing the first church, which is Tatara. You know, the seven churches of Revelation Paul is, Paul is dealing with the church in Tatara in the house of Lydia. When she was baptized in, in her household, so in the meeting where Paul ministered to the family, uh, <laughs> everybody was out there looking and receiving. You know, they didn't have the Bible. They received the word of the Lord to the apostle Paul. And you know how Paul was so powerful so anointed of the Lord. He is discerning each one in the member and the family of, of Lydia. <coughs> and he is preaching away. Hallelujah. Preaching away. Speaking boldly. Speaking powerfully in the life of this woman. What a wonderful, wonderful experience that Lydia is having with having Paul in her house. She besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, Come into my house. And she constrained Paul, meaning, meaning Paul didn't want to stay down there with all those men, weary from the journey, needing clothes washed, having, needing, eating properly in the house of a widow with a bunch of other people in it, and uh, uh, the family of Lydia, of course. And so Paul is simply trying to be a gentleman, not to impose himself upon this woman. Now, It means that they did not acquaint it as at first, feeling perhaps that it may be an imposition to her. But she would not take no for an answer. And, and of course, Paul remained there. So this exchange of Paul and Lydia, whatever Paul spoke to them, he edified them, built them, comforted them, encouraged them. 
Oh, I could, I could be a fly on the wall just to hear Paul lifting their spirits up, speaking about the Lord Jesus who died on the cross in Jerusalem, ascended into heaven on the third day. And, and, of course, after that, ascended to heaven uh, uh, after on the third, uh, uh, 50 days from, from ascending into heaven. And, of course, speaking about the second coming of Jesus, talking about the blessings of God in the gospel. Everybody was baptized in that house. Why? Because Paul prophesied. So prophecy in discernment of spirit. Let's go back to that screen one more time. Prophecy, prophecy in discerning of spirits. The two work together. They work together. Over here, you can do by yourself. You can do in church. has to be translated. But here, it's a powerful thing. Amen. Let me go back to the hotel screen now. I hope you are with me. But let me take a look now into prophesying and discerning of spirits when something bad is informed you by the Holy Spirit. Now, verse 16, chapter 16 of Matthew, I'm sorry, of, of, of Acts, Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, it doesn't say where he was, okay? More likely in the house of Lydia. Now, the when the Holy Spirit begins to move into a house, it affects all the other houses. And people come in. When, when Jesus came into Capernaum in the house of Peter, there were hundreds of people that came in there. So the Holy Spirit attracts people. As you lift the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit brings people unto him. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Now notice that Paul comes in. The dancer with the spirit of divination is attracted to Paul. You see, Paul is right here. The spirit of divination is right here. And as, as Paul prophesizes, the spirit of divination is attracted by the presence of God. This is very important. You never go look for a demon. It will come to you. You never go looking for a demon. It will come to you. When it comes to you, it's already done. It's already dealt with. All you have to do is just proceed speaking that which God gave you, and the rest is history. So let's take a look. Now, by the way, who wrote the book of, of Acts? Paul. Paul did. The book of Acts? Yeah, it's, it's, it's Luke. It's Luke. Luke wrote the book of Acts about 33 years post-resurrection. So, so the fresh information that Luke posts on, on, the, on the book of Acts the acts of the apostles, what the apostles did, what the book is all about. He's beginning to inform us about this Denzel. And, and what characterized this, this demon was, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Soothsaying is advice and counsel from the spirit world, which brought quite a sum of money to her owners. So it's as advice. What to do in the future, how to invest here, how to sell this thing in this city, how to make money right here, how to just give it away and throw it away. In other words, in other words, the suit saying here means advice from the spirit world pertaining to the future. What to do next? What is that? That is the opposite of prophesying in the spirit. So right off 
you begin to get the idea that the devil knows how to do business too. <coughs> the devil knows how to make profit too. The devil knows how to make money too. And in other words, if you are full of the Holy Spirit, God's going to wreck, wreck your life. He's going to part you apart. He's going to shake you all the way, take you upside down and shake cold on your legs so everything that belongs to the spiritual world that is evil to come out of your life so you can have a new life in Christ and a new business that profits. You know why people don't give a tithe? They got their own job. They got their own money. They are working for the devil. And when you work for the devil, you don't have much money left. When you work for the Lord, all needs are provided according to his mighty provision, sufficiency, and grace. And so let me ask you a question now that uh, we got into this area. Is your job a God-given job or the devil just got you wrapped? God given. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he says it's God given. Why is God given? Because God sent him here to run this operation here. He runs these cameras. He runs these screens. He runs every single program. And then the Lord is just using him so this evangelist can continue to preach until I can't preach anymore. That's a gift of God. Oh, hallelujah for Andy Hines. Now, So I'm sharing with you that discerning of spirits is, is to discern between good and bad. I told you the good on Lydia's life. Now I'm telling you the bad on the damsel that discerned the spirit, gave advice discerning the spirit world. Evil, evil, evil can make money for you. But when God transforms your life, when God changes your life, when God causes you to believe that he is in charge of your life, everything begins to change. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. That's revelation from the Holy Spirit. Oh, I want to take it in. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Pray for me. I need somebody to take care of me. I'm getting old. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's continue with the Denzel. The same followed Paul in us. The same means the girl. He began to follow Paul in in. <laughs> In Titus, in, in Timothy, uh, in Barnabas. <laughs> well, that's a dumb demon, isn't it? How can you have the courage to follow, <laughs> follow Paul? <laughs> that's not going to get up too well. The same followed Paul and us and cried. Implied that uh, it went on for some time, possible several days. Now, what did the denzel or the demon in the denzel say? These are men of the service of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. See, the demons know what salvation is. The demons know who gives salvation, who gives eternity, who gives. And the problem is, some of us don't know our worth of nothing about it. But the demon knows. These men went, are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, show us the way of salvation is, it is the original text. Verse 18. And this did she many days. Why did Paul did not act earlier? You might ask. Why would a man of God like Paul, instead of just taking authority and kicking <laughs> the demon, <laughs> why did Paul took a week? <laughs> you know, you might, you might don't want to know the answer of this question, <laughs> but <laughs> I do. I know. I wanted, I wanted to know why. And the reason why I want to know why 
is because if I ever have an opportunity to meet a dancer like that, I'm going to be very, honestly, I'm going to be listening to the Lord. One of the rules in discerning of spirits that we have to learn is that the discerning of spirits is not, is not a license to act. When you see something, you don't act right away. You hold your fort, put your gun in the holster, and uh, what, is, what, do you, what do you do when you click? Cocker. Not cocker. What holds the cocker? What holds that? Holster. You, there is a little flip here you put, a put, you, 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 you put on top of it to where you can't push your gun out. Well, I'll find that out. Meaning, do not act until the Holy Spirit reveals to you when, how, and what. When, time, how, how you pray, and what you're going to pray against. These three things are very important in the life of the believer. You are in a community with three or four men sitting down eating some goodies. You are in the church foyer. You are the one who God uses to pray. And you discern something in front of you that needs to be dealt with because it's evil. You, you discern does not exactly give you a license to act. You have to back down and wait upon the Lord. And so the man goes to church. And as you are heading home, you are in the parking lot about to get in your car and next door to you is this man. And you say, brother, can I have a prayer with you? Now that in the parking lot between the two cars is balanced. In the foyer eating cookies and that's, that's unbalanced. So Paul is here. is really waiting the right moment that the Holy Spirit will mm, get it. Amen. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? I want you to hear it. I want you to learn this. Hey, 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 stop talking down there. Listen to this. You, you need to learn this. If you're a pastor, you need to learn this. And she did this many days. But Paul being grieved. <laughs> what do you mean grieved? <laughs> grieved means I had enough. I'm just getting to my nerve. I'm, I'm just, I, I want to lock it down. Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit. Now, Paul did not say to the denzel. Paul did not speak to the denzel. Paul spoke to the demon. Paul did not speak to the denzel. Be careful. That's another rule of discerning of spirit. When God reveals to you the right moment and what to do, you always minister against the evil spirit and not to the person. I commend you. Let's take a look at this. I commend you. In the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her, and the evil spirit came out at the same hour. Now, this hour means here that it took about 15, 20, or 30 minutes probably as the group of men came around the little girl. And they began to pray in the spirit. As they began to pray and they began to anoint and began to pray. I have never seen a demon that didn't come out. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. That's a command. And this command is now in the proper time, in the proper place, in the right place. And the evil spirit came out in the same hour. Okay, let me stop right here. I hope you got the difference between discerning of spirit. Let me go back to the screen one more time, Andy. One more time. Now you understand discerning of spirits and prophesying. The two go together. Let me go back to the hotel screen. You understand that 
discerning of spirits, work with prophecy. Now, eventually, eventually, go back to the screen one more time in just a second. I'm going to show you that discerning of spirits work with the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, faith, work, community, gifts of healing, prophecy. Tongue. In other words, discerning of spirit work with all the gifts. And I'll share with you this as we go along on this great journey to understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you. The Lord love you. I love you. I'm Rick Bonfim, and uh, so good to be with you. Atribulado pela ação de Satanás Clamando-nos